Today's Cursed Mac shenanigans brought to you by Squarespace. But more on that in a bit. Ah, the Cursed Mac. It's been a little over a year since we picked up this funny little compact Mac, already painted black with a CD-ROM and one gigabyte jazz drive hacked into the case. And it's thanks to this quirky machine and our long journey upgrading it beyond all reason that many of you first discovered this channel. But at this point, many of this Mac's most interesting modifications are on the inside. So I recently asked all of you what we should do to get it ready to show off at VCF East this year. And well, your answer really surprised me. So today, let's take a quick stroll through Cursed Mac memory lane, and then we'll dress him up in something a little more risque to showcase all of the magic previously hidden on the inside. Oh, and someone very special reached out to me recently, and I have a few really cool pictures to share with you. So stay tuned. And if you think that the pinnacle of computer case modding was somewhere around 1993, and you still think that 16 colors are 14 too many, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. We do a lot of cool retro Macintosh shenanigans around here, and it's definitely worth sticking around. So in case you're new to the channel and you're looking at this thing like, what in the sweet spindler is going on here? Let me give you a quick rundown of how we got here. I picked up the cursed Mac in August 2020 from a nice guy here in Philadelphia, based on a Craigslist ad with a few grainy pictures of a black compact Mac with some weird drives hacked into it, sold as non-booting. When I got it home, we tried it out, and while we did get it to boot from a jazz disc, the curse quickly became apparent. It seemed to have a mind of its own, with spooky stuff happening like the CD-ROM drive opening and closing by itself over and over. When we cracked it open, the curse was solidified. It had a bunch of random speakers glued to the inside of the case, with disintegrating packing tape holding components in place. It was glorious. And it turned out to be a maxed out SE30 with 128 megs of RAM and a special 32-bit clean ROM. The first step in decursing it was sending the board out to our friend Mac84, who recapped it, performed some board level repairs, and ultrasonically cleaned it. Then we went all in on upgrades. We swapped in a working CD-ROM drive, a Rominator 2, a SCSI to SD as the main boot drive, and we met Bowl on the 68K MLA forums, who has recreated several incredibly rare Macintosh accelerators. We were lucky enough to get his incredible Carrera 040 clone and riser board with built-in Ethernet, which together are probably the rarest 68K Mac upgrades ever created, because he hand assembles every board. This accelerator lets us more than double the SE30's performance, on the fly, with the Mac still running using the Carrera control panel. We've also done some other goofy stuff like hack in an audio amplifier hooked up to a speaker I salvaged out of a Bluetooth speaker, but honestly, I kind of regret putting the control knob on the front of the case. And also it stopped working. Oh, and there was that time I tried to strip the paint off with a citrus paint remover and melted the case and then tried to fix it with automotive Bondo. So that brings us to today. At this point, the cursed Mac is more special for what's on the inside rather than its unusual appearance. And I was really torn on what to do. On one hand, I think it would be really cool to go entirely transparent. I could perhaps redesign how the CD-ROM drive works with something like a slot loading unit more integrated into the case. And it would also probably glow because I do have some RGB LEDs mounted on the internal structure. On the other hand, this black front painted panel has been a big part of what makes the cursed Mac cursed. To that end, I do have this Mac SE case, which unfortunately suffered a failed retro brighting many years ago and is all marbled and disgusting looking, that I was going to repurpose into a new black front panel for the cursed Mac. So I put it up to a vote and I fully thought that keeping the front black would win. But to my surprise, you all overwhelmingly voted for transparent. So that's what we're gonna do. I ordered a new clear case from Mac Effects and just look at this thing. 
It's an absolutely beautiful injection molded reproduction. And we'll take an incremental approach to modding this case to fit the CD-ROM. I'll show you what I mean once we have the Mac apart. But before we go ahead and drastically change the appearance of the cursed Mac, let me tell you about an email I got completely out of the blue. That's right, the original builder of the cursed Mac saw these videos and reached out to me. Not only did he tell me the whole real origin story of how this magnificent beast came to be, but he also sent over some pictures. I'll put the full story down in the description, but to sum it up, his name is Brian Lindgren, and yes, he is a musician, and the cursed Mac was his main computer in college. But he didn't do these mods to produce music. He was actually just a true and through computer nerd, and one very after my own heart. You see, Brian didn't go to college in the 90s. He did all of these upgrades so that he could use the cursed Mac as his main college computer in the 2000s. And he gave me two specific reasons. One, so he could write papers, use email, and talk on AOL Messenger, as one does in the 2000s. And two, now this is a direct quote, if I was going to bring a 1980s computer to college, it had to look cool and it had to play CDs. So check out the full story in the description below. It's a lot of fun. And I've also put a link to Brian's Instagram, which has a hacker modder kind of vibe that you might expect from the original creator of the cursed Mac. And speaking of clear cases, let me present a clear case for the sponsor of today's video, Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform that enables you to build a beautiful online presence, but it does so much more with analytics, tools for email campaigns, e-commerce, and SEO tools. Squarespace's integrated platform does away with the piecemeal approach of the past and lets you focus on design and creativity. And you don't need to be tech savvy in the slightest to get started. Even if your expertise peaked with 16 megahertz 80s computers, you can jump right in and go from zero to fully implemented web presence. So check out squarespace.com slash action retro today for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use code action retro to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And now let's clear up the cursed Mac. So we'll start by taking apart the cursed Mac. And if I'm being honest, Things have not been totally rosy with this machine. In fact, sometimes it doesn't like to start up on the first try and I have to start it up two or three times to get it to fully boot. Otherwise it has symptoms like Semizimac or it'll just freeze partway through the boot. So maybe reseeding all of the components inside will be good for this machine. So let me show you what I'm thinking with the optical drive. Instead of the tray loading drive that we have in there currently, I picked up this 36 speed slot loading Procom CD-ROM drive. And I think when we mount this onto the internal structure, this slot will line up with the floppy drive opening on the front of the clear case. So. What I'd like to do is take the front panel off of the CD-ROM drive here and just only cut a hole big enough for a CD-ROM in the front of the clear case. And uh, yeah, this is already cracked and broken, so no big loss in removing it. There we go.
And yeah, that actually lines up perfectly. Now in order to make this fit, I am going to have to make a few Dremely adjustments. Namely, I'm going to have to cut out a bit more of this floppy drive opening and uh, I'm going to have to trim down this back kind of bracket for the speaker, which we don't need now because obviously there's no speaker here. It's just going to be the CD-ROM drive. So we're going to do it in the fashion of old school case modding and we're just going to make marks directly onto the case for where to cut by lining it up with the CD-ROM drive here. Okay, so I've put it in a big cardboard box here to hopefully catch any dust that spills out and contain it. And uh, remember what I said about doing this progressively? I'm gonna try and make these precision cuts here so that we can have a slot loading CD-ROM drive just in the front of the case without the CD-ROM bezel. But if, it, if I mess it up, then I can just go bigger and make the same cutouts that the original cursed Mac had and we'll just keep the bezel on just like in the good old days. And uh, when you're going to be dremeling, it's always good to have protection here. So there we go. I'm just kidding. These are going to go on my invisible eyes. Honestly, I'm really pleased with how that just came out. It's a little bit rough around the edges, but I have a polishing and sanding kit that should be able to take care of that. I was able to get a pretty straight line across and I cut out the little spaces I need in the back to fit the CD-ROM drive bracket and you cannot see it at all from the front. It looks just like it did before. So yeah. Let's put this up against the case and the, the CD-ROM bracket and see if it lines up. All right, I am really rather pleased with myself here because check it out, it fits. And <laughs> it fits perfectly. I think I did a pretty good job. Now it's not perfect, obviously, but what old school case mod ever was perfect, I definitely, have some stuff to buff out and sand down, but I have the hole for the headphone jack and the volume knob here and all the screws line up and there's an equal amount of space for the slot for the drive on either side of the actual drive. And yeah, it's gonna go together. Okay, so I've got it back together and two things. One, I can't believe how awesome this looks in the transparent. I was not expecting to love this look as much as I do. I was really thinking that painting this some sort of tint or black would be the way to go, but this definitely looks cursed to me in the best possible way. But the second thing is a bit of bad news and uh, well, just take a look for yourself. <laughs> That's right, the disc is just about two millimeters too high to eject out of this opening here. So I'm gonna have to figure out something to do. Maybe I can lower the CD-ROM in here a little bit, but more likely I'll just trim a little bit more off of the top of here and maybe even 3D print some kind of panel to go in here as kind of a guide to stick the disc in. So I was reassembling it to test it and once I saw what it was starting to look like, I couldn't help myself and I just put it all the way back together. Because just look at this thing, it's beautiful. This clear case is absolutely stunning and I was not expecting to love it as much as I do. I mean, I knew it was gonna be cool to look into the sides and see all of the internals, but the front of the case in clear with the opening for the CD-ROM dremeled out and kind of hidden, <laughs> it looks beautiful. Now let me zoom in and show you some of the things I did to get this CD-ROM drive really well integrated into the front of the case. So of course I had to go up a little bit to fit this CD-ROM drive, which left a pretty big gap in here. So what I did was I 
whipped up this little beveled guide here, which snaps into place and really stays in there just with friction fit. It's actually pretty hard to get it back out. And it's ever so slightly slanted on the front to guide CDs into the drive. I also tried printing it in clear, but that came out really light colored compared to the transparent case. And I think the black fits a lot better with the black plastic and the internals in the CD-ROM drive. I also drilled a little pass-through hole right here for the eject button, and I printed out a little button thing with a bigger thing on the back so that it sits in there, presses up against the button, and uh, actually, I didn't even measure. <laughs> I completely guessed the size and got it right the first time. But now, just watch this magic. It just sucks that CD right in. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I can't believe how good this came out. Now, of course, it is a little bit loud because this is a fast SCSI CD-ROM drive at 32 speed and we are running it without its intended bezel on. But that just adds to the charm of this computer at least in my opinion. And then when it comes time to eject it, it just magically appears from the front of this case. <laughs> it's so good. And then I just love what this looks like when it's reading from the CD-ROM drive and writing to the SCSI to SD because all of the lights in here are just blinking away and you can see all of it. But now let me show you the coolest and most unexpected part, at least from my perspective. But first I'm gonna have to turn out the lights. Just look at that. Look at how beautifully this thing glows in the dark with those three LEDs that I stuck in the back of the machine here. Look at the pattern that this clear case makes on the wall from those three LEDs. <laughs> and Look at how cool the inside looks. I have it set to purple now because that's kind of the color of this channel. But look at that. It's beautiful. And I just cannot get over this beautiful pattern that this crystal case makes on the wall behind the machine. And looking straight on at the computer, the edges just glow with the color of that LED. We have all different colors that we can try. Wow, look at this red. <laughs> Nothing says cursed like blood red. That's <laughs> so cool. Wow. Yeah, I think purple is my favorite for now. Oh, and before you say anything, I didn't forget about the jazz drive. In fact, I didn't put it back in here on purpose. Originally, I was gonna cut out the opening so that could be a nice slot loading hidden jazz drive as well, but then I got to thinking, I don't really use the jazz drive that much, and if I ever need to, I have an external one. Feasibility-wise, this would be much better suited with something like a zip drive in here because I have zip drives in basically all of my old Macs. I have a zip drive in my PowerBook Pismo, I have a USB zip drive that I hook up to my M1 MacBook Pro, and that's how I get files back and forth from all of my different machines. Or we could go even more obscure and find some super weird, one of those super floppy disks or something and put that in here, and then we could read floppy disks and whatever those super high density floppy disks are, and that would be much more interesting, at least to me, than the jazz drive. So I'm gonna leave it out for now and I'll see if I find anything interesting at Vintage Computer Festival East because they are doing consignment and I think a bunch of people are gonna be selling stuff at their tables. But let me know what you think about this drive. Should I put the jazz drive in or should I find something super weird or should I leave it as is and maybe just do a pass through for the SD card from the SCSI to SD? As far as future upgrades for the cursed Mac, there's really not a whole lot else we can shove in here. In fact, really the only other thing that I'm curious to add is an external graphics solution so that we can run a color second monitor off the back of this machine. 
And I actually have a bead on one that would install right here and fit inside this case and fit on top of the bull Mac riser card here. And then we can actually wire it to the pin headers for this DB15 connector on the back of the machine that was a networking connector on the original card, but on this bull Mac card, he just left the pin headers open so that we can wire whatever we want to up to it. But that'll do it for this video. Thank you so much for following the journey of this cursed Mac. And if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more Macintosh shenanigans like this, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to Chris, Al Greta, Tom, Stig124, Justin D. Morgan, Greg Rutke, Chris Calderon, and Nick Hamsey, who are my highest tiered patrons, and all of my Patreon supporters who help to make these videos possible.